In Module Fourteen, we will move forward to Chapter Twenty One. We will talk about set and maps from Java collection. So we continue to introduce more data structure from Java under the Java collection. So this week we will focus on set. So we have different kind of set. We have hash set, linked list hash set, and tree set. Then the second one we will talk about maps. So what are set and maps? To be simple to say, set is still a collection of data. But the most important thing is, all the nodes in the set they are all non-duplicate elements. So remember earlier when we have the array or stack or queue. We push the value one by one into the stack or queue, or using the index to assign the value in the array. We didn't really check what their value is. However, for the set, if we want to add any value into the set, before you can add in, they will check if the add new uh the newly added node value already exists in the set or not. If that's a duplicate value, then they won't add that into the set, because set always maintain non-duplicate elements. So then, the other couple of video we will talk about maps. So the maps to be simple, we just say you are not only store the value of the data. Actually, for the map, each data we have a pair. They will be the key and the value. So that we will talk about in the last two video. So the first one, let's talk about set. So the set we already see the hierarchy under the collection from previous module. So the previous module we show you the collection. We have three different kinds. We have the list. So that's why we have the stack array list. That came from the list. Then we also have the queue. So from the queue, we have the order. So we have the linked list, and also we have the priority queue. So the last one will show under the collection we have the set. So the set actually they have couple different concrete class. So you can see sets actually they are the same as the list and the queue. It's just a interface. Then you have the sorted set. They are still is the interfaces, so that's why here the tree set is inherited from the sorted set. So we know this one, the tree set. When we want to display the value, actually they are not only contain non-duplicate value, they also will be in the sorted order. So that's one of the set concrete class. We will introduce this class. So then we will see. We also have the other two concrete class for the set. We call hash set and the link hash set. So the hash set and link hash set they all inherited from the abstract set. So in the abstract set, they implement. They need the value to be stored in the set. Each data, or we say the object, as the value in the set. They need to implement hash code function. So according to the hash code function, we will know where to store the data. So that's here we have hash set and the link hash set. So these three different kind of set is we will introduce. So the first one we will focus on the hash set. So after you see that collection hierarchy. So of course, this one from the previous module, the set is one kind of collection. So that's why they all have those method. So before we have using the add, we using add all, we use contents. So then we use the remove. But here you will see actually under the collection we have the hash call function. So this hash call function actually is return the hash code. So also we still have the iterator. Oh,、uh, so that's why if we want to print out all the element from the set, you still can use the iterator. 
but we focus on here with more detail to cope to cope about the set. So one thing I just want to remind you earlier we say set contain no duplicate elements. So which function we need? Right. So remember different data type you store in the set. So since we say contain no duplicate elements, right? So actually how the set class they will con compare the true value they with the same they are equal to each other. Are they duplicate or not? Right. So that's why they call the equals method. So that's very important for any data you want to store in the set. That object, that user defined object should implement or we say overwrite the equals method from the object class. So that's one thing. But what else? So one equals method is for sure you need to include it in the user defined object if you want to store in the set. So that's why we can make sure they have no duplicate element. But continue we will see from here. That's earlier we say we have couple different concrete set. We have tree set. We have hatch set. We have the link hash set. So I just want you to focus on this one first. Okay. So earlier did I did I told you if your set you see your set can specify the data type what kind of data you want to store in the set. So this E can be student, can be string, can be any object type. But if like we say we want to store all the students in the hash set. Right, so the student actually is a user defined class. So that's why in order to maintain non-duplicated element, we need to override the equals method. Okay. However, the next one, your hash set. If you decide to implement a hash set, right? The hash set actually what they need is earlier we see the collection they have a hash code function we need to call. So actually this hash code function is came from the abstract set. Abstract set they will call two function. The hash set interface actually they will call for the equals method to check the value is the same. So then they also need to have the hash code method. So this hash code method will define the value returned by the hash code method. They will decide where the new added value will be inserted in the set. So earlier we talked about the equals method is came from. Did you remember that's came from the object class, right? So then how about the hash code method? Right, if you recall in the previous couple lecture, we did talk about the object class. So the object class from the previous class, on the previous lecture, we talk about the object class. The object class have couple important method. You have the two string method, right? So that's how we will print the information from the object. We have equals method. So that's how we can compare two objects. So then we have the Chrome method, right? So then the other one we didn't have time to talk about that is the hash code method. So you can see hash code method actually is the instance instance method belong to the object class. So any user defined class, for example, student, you will inherit it from the object class. So then you need to override your own two string method. You need to overwrite how you compare two students. So the same thing, the student object, we also need to have their own hash code. You need to tell me how you want to convert specific student object into, you see the return type is the int. So this one, they will hash code function always return an int value. So they just return a unique number for this object. So on the other hand, the hash code kind of, if you learn more detail from the data structure, we told you about the hash code. 
That means we want to convert a value into an index value. So that's why we can easily to access that in the array. So that's kind of the hash code function they will do. So they will return any, they will convert any data type into a int data type. Okay, so for example, if for the string, string actually have the hash code function as well. And how they calculate a string become integer, they actually just convert all the character in the string to the ASCII value, then they add together become an integer value. So that's the hash code. Uh, so that's why now you will see whenever you create, you define a class, couple important things you need to remember. You need to override two string method. If you want to know how to print this class, this object, you need to have equals method if we want to compare. You need to have the hash code function if you want to create a hash set, then you need to override your hash code function. Otherwise, they don't know how to add each value into the hash set. So that's the hash set class. It's a concrete class. So one requirement, the uh, if user define object you want to create the hash set, you need to override your hash code function. You need to override your equals method. So then when you create, you can convert any collection into a hash set. Or you can specify your initial capacity. Or you can specify your load factor. So the load factor actually just like earlier we say, we have the hash code function. The hash code method actually is will convert our object using the hash code function to convert into an integer. So this integer actually is the index of the array. So that's why here, since you have array to store the data for your set, right? So that's why we need to see how much the value contain in the array. So that's the load factor. For example, your capacity for the array is 100. So then if you have 75 elements occupied, so then your load factor is 0.75. So most of the time you specify the load factor, we will give you kind of, if the load factor is greater or equal to this value, so then you should try to resize your capacity. So let's see an example how to create a string hash set. They will contain multiple different CT. So we can just create the set. So using the date uh, in the angle bracket, specify the value, the type of the value you want to insert into the set. So we create a hash set. So then to add the element one by one, we call the add method. So you can see here, we add London, Paris, New York, San Francisco, Beijing, and New York. So you can see New York actually we add twice. So when we're using the for each loop to, pre, to print all the string in upper cases, you will see they become San Francisco, Beijing, New York, London, and Paris. So the New York didn't print twice. The reason is all our sets will include non-duplicate data. And you will see here, actually the order we add in is London, Paris, New York, San Francisco, right? So how come you see they didn't really follow the order? The reason is if you use the hash set, they will just convert each value using the hash code function and find the index. So actually the order they have, you cannot really predict. So the order you print is not the order you add. Actually kind of is the order from your hash code value they're using for the index. So if you really want to have the order according to um, the order you insert each note when you do the print, then actually you need to use the linked hash set classes to create that. So we will see in next video. This video is uh, about 15 minutes now.